Hello, everybody. Welcome back to yet another episode of Cape Rugby TV. This is, of course, the show that takes a look at what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. Uh, nice to have you along. Of course, the show every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. And again, uh, repeats on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, tonight's show is, of course, brought to you by Score Energy Drinks. Score is, of course, on board with Western Province Rugby and the Western Province Club Rugby Sevens. Direct Access, your financial services partner, MCAM 24 Pharmacy, and Thorburn Security Solutions. Folks, a uh, nice full show for you this evening. We'll be catching up with the uh, um, public relations media liaison from La Motte, uh, Reginald Pfeiffer. We'll speak to Jerome Parvater, Western Province Rugby Under 20 coach. Uh, of course, the players have been busy with a lot of testing um, at club level for the under 20s and, of course, also. Uh, the juniors, the school guys that have been going for uh, testing as well at the High Performance Center with um, Coach Jerome Parvater. We're trying to get Charmaine Kayser from Tigerberg Rugby on the, the line. She's, of course, a player coach at uh, Tigerberg Rugby's women's team. And we'll speak to Jonathan van der Valt. Jonathan van der Valt is, of course, director of rugby at Falls Bay Rugby Football Club. And they've also been busy with their uh, women's structures, their youth structures, as well as their past players' structures. But joining me on the line now uh, from Young Ideas, he is the uh, Deputy President of Young Ideas Rugby Football Club, Sabelo Nzanwa. Sabelo, fantastic to have you on the line, sir. How are you on your side? Thank you, JP. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to the viewers as well. Uh, first time for us to get you um, on the show. Uh, it looks like you've got fantastic quality there, great um, signal. So obviously you've managed to, to get on top of this digital challenge. Oh, yes, most definitely. Remember, we speak about 4IR. Uh, what can you do with that 4IR? I think in the last few sessions you taught us, we said if we can't be inclined to 4IR, we'll be left out. And therefore, we were trying to squeeze ourselves in that space so that we can be able to conquer with the rest of the world. Sabela, you're the Deputy President of Young Ideas Rugby Club. Before we talk about anything, uh, you've got to tell us a little bit more about Young Ideas. So the, the public out there know who this club is. Oh, most definitely. One of the well-known clubs within the township, uh, based originally from Langa, was established in 1972. Uh, it has produced so many that represented Western province then. It's placed in Langa. However, we, we, we have extended that base because we realized that in Langa, we've got three clubs that plays uh, within Western province. Langa in its own grain ideas and, and zebras. So we're extending our reach, you know, to even putting a base in Mpuleni. So Young Ideas is a is a very exciting club to be part of. Uh, it thinks out of the box. It try and breaks the traditions, and of course, it looks at also to join every potential partnership with existing and well-established clubs, so that we can also create an incubator uh, of some sort within the youth that we have and the young players that we have in well-established clubs as well. I know that in, in Western Province, we've been talking uh, a lot about um, the origination of the name of, of clubs. Um, it certainly seems like your club name, Young Ideas, is living up to its reputation with new and young ideas. Look, look the aim is, you see, sometimes ideas, they grow and they become old. And therefore, you need from time to time to rekindle them so that they can be in sync with the revolving. Because uh, our rugby, our sport, is revolving. And therefore, the ideas at some stage keep, needs to be rekindled and revived. So, however, there's a base that you don't forget, the original ideas, which forms part of our vision and mission. That you can't change. It's, in, it's linked to what was established back in 1972. However... Part of saying young ideas was always want to have young minds, you know, uh, to be part of our structure. And we were to look as well within our executive, you know, uh, our, our secretary of the club is, is, is just less than 35 years to start with, you know. So was, you'd want to have that blend, was our belief is, if you can't think younger, if you can't involve or invest in youth, you have no future, we'll just end up having just a name. So mm -hmm. there's relevance in there. That's fantastic. Definitely you're seeing the, um, the wisdom and the, the new generation coming together. That, that, that's, that's, that's quite fantastic. Tell us a little bit about, um, about the actual uh, young players. We believe that you're busy building your, your youth structures. Yes. 
we we have we have a since October, the first week of October, we have held a session of about 45 young people involved. There are certain schools within Langa that we, we've joined partnership with, uh, whereby we assist them you know, with their training and development of their players. In, in return, they become an incubator process of our club as well and play in our unders. But all of us was th thought and seen that playing just rugby with no content, especially on a black child, has become a problem in our township because there's more gangsterism. Therefore, we need to bring content in it. So in the last three weeks, we've been, we've been running sessions with them jointly, of course, with, with, the, with the teachers at schools about what it means to be a black man in South Africa nowadays and what is required of them. But of course, we don't do that outside of the context of rugby as well. You know. uh, so far, I think we were trying to, we're trying to shape an identity of these young people when they join our club so they have their, this identity then they can be proud of themselves and also understand what would make them different from just being a young man in a township and playing rugby compared to just a young man who rumors around the streets in a township and not being in line to a club that's playing rugby especially with well-known club like uh, like the like ideas in this particular instance uh, so that, that, that's that's our main focus and then we're enjoying that space in fact our president, Max Macapella, is very passionate about it. He's driving that, that, that project himself. We're just supporting it. So, Bella, just tell us about your, um, your, your uh, um, outreach project, or at least uh, that you guys are busy with. You, you, you've also got an outreach project, um, and you're also um, busy doing some sponsor engagements. Oh, yes. Uh, we, we are currently busy with some sponsor engagements. Again, I think the session we had with you a few weeks ago... Uh, has added on on what on what we have we know. Look, most of our clubs, especially the the, the township rugby clubs uh, within Western Province, uh, sometime in, in 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 during the Easter weekend, there's a big Easter uh, tournament. Uh, either we tour Eastern Cape or they come yeah. this side. Yeah. But I also yeah. realized that there's a problem with our clubs in terms of traveling on weekly basis when the league is on, and therefore. We've been engaging uh, with the betting industry because we've seen that they've shown interest in sponsoring some of our rugby clubs. Some have been sponsored, like Hollywood. Uh, so we are engaging with them. I think we're at a very advanced stage. As well, I see your background has score. I think if I were to give credit to my president, uh, Max, he brought them into our rugby uh, when they first started to, to sponsor the first Easter tournament that were Young Ideas held. Yeah, in Langa. Yeah. Uh, so we're engaging with, with, with those, uh, but there's great progress. I think there are some confirmations, but it would be much more for me to announce them at, at, at this particular platform. Yeah, we'll wait for that. We'll wait for the big announcement. And uh, just, Sabella, from a final, uh, a final question, the players itself, of course, nothing, nothing happens without the players. Um, have you been able to stay in, in touch with the players um, over the last few months during the lockdown? Um, we've had a number of coaches and, and, and captains and presidents and people have been doing WhatsApp messages and they've been talking to each other on on, on, on digital platform of, of different natures. Have you been in touch? Yes, we have been. We've been in touch uh, since the lockdown. We have a, a Young Ideas WhatsApp rugby club, which includes both the administration and all the players. And on more or less on a daily basis, we engage, especially uh, also on weekends. We even decide which games are we going to be watching together, which will be able to chat. Did you see that pass? Did you see that? Uh, we have tried uh, uh, three weeks ago to even have a Zoom party, Saturday Zoom party. <laughs> uh, but of course, you see, you'll have your drink on screen and be able yeah, to see. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, so we can have that camaraderie. Uh, at least we do know which player is doing what, where, when, in all of us. That I can tell you. That's the know. critical thing, is maintaining the contact. We've, we've maintained, of course, also even trying to urge certain players to say, are they taking care of themselves health-wise? Well, they need to be fit at some stage, even if we're not playing this year, unfortunately. And we, uh, but of course, they need to condition themselves. But I think the, the WhatsApp has proven to be a great successful one, because not everyone uh, is able to have some advanced technology, as we may think, but WhatsApp, we we we, are, we conquered almost on daily basis. Yeah, yeah, you know, lots of challenges in the digital space, and uh, I think, uh, uh, as you just said, maybe uh, one must sort of identify the tools that works for you. Sabella, we'll leave it at that. Um, we definitely want to get you back on the show on a regular basis, so that we can find out what's happening at Young Ideas and um, give exposure to your players, to your sponsors, and. Um, 
we'll say to you thanks for joining us and of course stay safe and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon thank you thank you happy i appreciate the time thanks to everyone thank you there we go folks uh sabelo mzanwa the uh, deputy president of um young ideas and uh wow um there's some impressive stuff happening there and as you heard me say we are definitely going to get sabelo back on the line to tell us what's happening at young ideas well in fact get him back on a regular basis no harm with that. Folks, so we'll take a break. When we come back from the break, we carry on talking about what's happening in the world of West Wales Club Rugby. Back in a sec. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's, of course, Cape Rugby TV, and we carry on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. And uh, as you know, a lot of clubs have, of course, been very busy behind the scenes, um, not only preparing for 2021 and and uh, staying engaged with their players, but they've also been busy with a whole lot of activities in terms of um, behind the scenes administration and a lot of clubs of course also been doing the media marketing and sponsorship workshop and we're expecting big things um, in 2021 um, but not just that clubs have also been busy engaging with their youth structures their women's structures and their past players structures and one of the players and administrators and or shall I say former players of Lamotte Rugby Football Club is uh, Reginald Pfeiffer. Reginald joins me on the line. Reginald are you well on that side? Hi, JP. Um, good evening to your viewers. Yeah, I'm well on this side. Uh, Reginald, I think it's the first time for us that we have you um, call it in the studio, even if it's uh, virtually like this. But because uh, in the past, I think we might have been interviewing you on the side of the field as a player. You've been at Lamotte for a long time. Yes, I've, I've been at uh, Lamotte uh, since uh, the start of my playing career. Um, coming through the junior ranks and having the privilege to go through the second team in the in the first team. So yeah, it's been my whole rugby career at Lamont. And now you've you've uh, am I right to say have you hung up your boots? Um, not yet. <laughs> uh, temporarily hung them up, but hoping to return back to action uh, this coming season. I don't really know any club rugby players who, who hang up their boots permanently because I think, as you know, uh, we go from playing juniors to club rugby and then we're part of the past players or the old boys structure and we keep playing until, until for many, many years. Uh, um, but Reginald, you've, you've of course, um, uh, moved a little bit now into the administration space. In actual fact, you're, you're, you're now helping out with the public relations at Lamotte as well. Uh, yes, yes, I am. Um, the decision wasn't easy to, to leave the field to actually focus more uh, around the public relations area and also the administrative area of the club. But it was, it was a, a component of our club that was in dire need of attention. So I thought I'd use my, my expertise to assist in, in that matter to... to uh, help with the re-emergence, if I can call it like that, of, of La Motte Rugby, because we've, we've had a, some bad, bad few years, and, but now we're back on track to getting La Motte Rugby uh, back to where it was in the past. That's fantastic. You mentioned, um, you mentioned the fact that you played for the juniors and then threw into the senior ranks as well. Tell us a little bit about the different structures that you've got at La Motte. Uh, obviously, you've got um, under twenties and you've got juniors as well. Yes, it's a, it's it's a quite it's a, actually our, our project that that is ran in in Lamotte. Um, we have our, our junior structures which ranges from age nine up to eighteen years of age. Um, we we play social games and uh, uh, a social league with. Uh, some of other Western province uh, clubs around, especially here in our Stellenbosch area. Then we have our, our senior structure, which consists of our, our second and, and first team, which participates in the Simonsburg League of Western province. So what we're actually trying to do now is to integrate the two um, to make the club more sustainable. Um, Reginald, and uh, in, in addition to that, um, as you said, you're busy building on the media side. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Simonsburg region in a second, because that's no 
that's not an easy league, and it's, it does look like things get pretty serious in the in the Simonsburg League there. Lots of derbies, lots of challenges there. Um, but you're also busy building your, your past players' structure and your youth structures. Uh, yes, we are. Um, and the Simonsburg League is very... It's a, it's a league based on emotion, and there's a lot of emotion uh, going in, into games as... Most of the teams come out of very small, proud communities. And when you go out, the people come out in numbers, so show their support. But uh, in terms of uh, growing our clubs to uh, one day see us uh, participating in the other leagues in Western province, we aim to now accommodate uh, our youth supply chain, if I can call it like that, so that we can channel our, our young guys, get them off the streets, get them involved in rugby, and hopefully get them playing for Lamotte at a certain stage in, the, in their life. Who are the, who are the top challenges there in, uh, in the Simonsburg region? I mean, you've got obviously Fora and you've got Excelsior, a couple of, couple of tough teams up there. Yes, for Fora definitely. Um, one of our arch rivals, if I can call, call them that way. <laughs> Hope they, this is no insult to Excelsior because our game against Excelsior is also uh, one of those Stellan Boys derbies, which is also very personal when we when we get down the field. But yeah, it's it's a very tough league to, to play in, but it's a very valuable league for Western Province to help uh, emerging clubs to uh, get going. Um, Reginald, the, the last few months has uh, obviously seen a lot of the structures um, as you now, if we move slightly into the public relations side now, uh, but a lot of the clubs have been busy building their structures and working on their databases and their Facebook pages and so on. Have you guys got specific projects that you're busy looking at right now in terms of growing the membership? Yes, indeed, we are, are busy. We, we are starting with our, our database and we are going to start with our, our, our players. So they, that is the, the pool where we are starting our, our database and then we're going to move out, uh, attracting family members. We're going to get our fans uh, details to, to get to know our, 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 our fan base on a on a personal basis and communicate more uh, with regards to uh, to the club fantastic um reginald if people want to join the club if they want to find you um what's the best way to do it um you can find us on uh, on facebook uh just to to inform from the viewers um, we've since uh, had a, a merger with our neighboring community, uh, Vemazuk Wanderers. So we are known as Lamont Wanderers now, and that's the name of our our Facebook page. So we've had uh, uh, some change, and that is part of our restructuring and resurgence of rugby in Lamont by combining the two communities. Any last shout outs there, Reginald, that you maybe want to tell anybody that um, um, if they want to uh, 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 just uh, from your side? Yeah, uh, I just want to send a shout out to, to my colleague uh, at the club, Carlo van der uh, for, for arranging uh, this, this whole, whole meeting. And I want to thank the whole uh, Lamont and Vimazuk community for participating and believing in our in our growth. Uh, and yeah, I hope the guys enjoy the eight weeks return to play and training that we started last week. And you boys know uh, we see each other on the field. Thanks, Reginald. We'll leave it at that. Stay safe that side and we'll catch up again soon. Okay, thanks, JP. And good night to your viewers. Thanks, Reginald. There we go, folks. Reginald Fife, uh, of course, uh, public relations at Lamotte Rugby Football Club. And there you have it. Vemersuk joining with Lamotte. Um, now the Lamotte Wanderers. They're busy building the youth structure. They're busy building their um, past player structure. 
and um, just go and do a search there. Go and do a search for Lamotte Wanderers on um, on Facebook and uh, and sign up and get involved. Get involved at Lamotte uh, Rugby Football Club, folks. As you know, on a uh, weekly basis, we uh, we take a look at uh, one of the public reviews that come in from MCM 24 Hour Pharmacy. Now, of course, MCM, as you can see it behind me there, is there on the corner of N1 and uh, Durban Road. They're very easy to find. And as I said, on a weekly basis, we do a public review of the customers that went to, to uh, um, MCM 24 Hour Pharmacy. And um, today's review comes from Audrey or Andre Baird, um, who gave MCM a five-star rating. And they said, thank you, uh, Brian for MCHEM uh, for calling me back and giving advice. Really great to have you help me at this time of night. And then we of course know that MCHEM is a 24-hour pharmacy and so is open 24-7. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, every staff member at MCHEM 24-hour pharmacy is of course geared to help you with your pharmaceutical requirements, um, that's from the minute that you park to the minute that you leave. MCAM staff, they're there to help you with whatever you need, whenever you need it. Um, that's, of course, MCAM's promise. And MCAM 24-hour pharmacy is always open, and they're there to help you 24 hours a day, every day. Folks, uh, stick around. When we uh, come back from a break, we'll carry on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Women's Club Rugby. Welcome back, folks. Cape Rugby TV. We carry on talking about what's happening with all the Western Province Club Rugby and, of course, in uh, Western Province Rugby. And as you know, a lot of the um, uh, Club Rugby players moving into Western Province space and, of course, uh, the juniors coming through the ranks. And, of course, the last few months has been COVID, as we know. And uh, slowly, slowly now we're starting to see uh, athletes and players getting back to some form of training but it doesn't happen as simple as that you don't just start training you actually need to get a few checks done before the ball gets rolling on the line with me now Jerome Parvart a Western Province Rugby under 21 and under 20 coach Jerome we're like doing a lot Hi, good Zepi thank you with a very busy week very good Jerome let's start at the beginning let's go back two weeks I know we spoke to you uh, just the other day from Western Province Rugby, but then of course you started planning quite a lot with the um, with the juniors coming for for testing, and you had some testing on Saturday at both City Park and at the High Performance Centre. Yes, JP. Saturday was quite a busy day. Uh, the schools were uh, testing here with Wal Walfred Kibiru at the HPC, and uh, we were testing the club players at uh, at City Park. Yeah. And um, I must say, thanks to the clubs, it was quite a big turnout. We had about 60 uh, under 20 players that we test on Saturday. So, yeah, it was a quite, a, quite a good turnout. So City Park, of course, uh, one of the Western Province Rugby grounds. Um, there was uh, just the club rugby under 20s, is that right? Exactly, yes. So where do the club rugby under 20 players go now? Uh, you, you had the under 20s also at the High Performance Centre. Do they join? Do they join at some stage? Because am I right in saying that the high performance center was just was the school guys? Yeah, they were the, uh, the school guys were at the high performance center. Yeah. So what we busy doing now, uh, myself and the conditioning coach, uh, we busy working through the um, through the data of, of all the guys that we tested and look at their results. Um, and we explained to the guys on Saturday, we will take the guys because there's not a lot of time. So we'll take the guys who's currently on form and we'll work through the testing. Uh, so hopefully by next week, we will invite a few of dead guys uh, who stood out in the testing. How does this go now, Jerome? You've got the, the players then under 20s testing at uh, the clubs and of course the school guys. Um, where does that roll out to? I mean, we know you, you told us last week that they will now break for exams and that. Do, when do you expect to see them again? Um, yeah, look, the, 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 the school guys, because of the, the exams and the schools are going on, so we will see them on the 6th of January, the school guys. But the university guys, we, we, we busy with them. And then obviously with the the club guys that we tested, the guys that we're going to invite next week. So we're busy with that guys, yeah, the more sort of senior guys who's out of school. And Jerome, you mentioned that you've got a strength and conditioning coach. 
um, does what does he do now? Does does he actually stand stand at the testing and write all the results down and then go back home and do the data or the analysis and check the stats? That's exactly JP. Uh, I mean, uh, you can think for yourself. It's it's quite a lot of data and quite a lot of stats because we try. And what he's busy also with is trying to work through the data and all that stats so that we can send each club their data and the stats so that they can see where their players are. And, what, and, and then he will obviously send them what we expect from the players and where they should be. Now, we know that especially this year, you guys have been doing um, all these online uh, uh, workshops with uh, national coaches, international coaches. Um, when we look at the sort of testing that you're busy with now, is there is there something that pops out at an international level as a trend that um, maybe defines a player that one can see? Hang on, this is very consistent results, uh, and and we we can see a uh, um, where this player is go to, uh, going to. Yeah, look, it, uh, JP, what we because we were close, uh, or the conditioning coach were close to. Uh, the Stormers or the, the the Curry Cup conditioning coach, but we not at uh, we don't measure like with the international rugby. I think that's a, a, a step further. But for us and with, especially with club players, we measure uh, say for example, like if they measure skin folds of a prop, so they will work on take Stephen Kitts off. Yeah, yeah. We don't expect the guy to be more the same, but. They give us a, a sort of a fair idea where we want the prop and like how much we need him to weigh, how much uh, and, 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 and yeah, right, and the, right, the skin yeah. folds, what the fat presentation of a prop must be, whatever. Because yeah. people say to you, uh, Jerome, I've got a very big guy, yeah, he's a big, I've got a big prop, you must look at this guy. We don't look at that size anymore. There's yeah, yeah, big, yeah. big, big, big for certain people mean fat. Yes. Us, that doesn't mean anything because yeah. that guy's not going to last a game. He's going to miss out on defense and stuff. So we've got this data. So if you look at a loose forward, we take Peter Steff is not playing anymore now. So we look at Sia, we look at Aaron van Rijn, or that type of guys in yeah. certain positions. We look at uh, backline players. We have the norms here of the, the, the senior team. And then what our guy do, he just sort of look at the norms that we can do and we test according to that we don't expect the guy to be the same but we have a sort of a baseline working from there to where we want to be it's fascinating i suppose just everybody has different body structures and body composition that that can can which is why you need to test because isn't that it isn't that it exactly and, and, and as i say um i think we 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 of the few provinces at this stage, doing that, and myself and Wilfred Kibru were talking uh, over the over the weekend. So I was just like, because I pop in here Saturday uh, after out testing, and they were still sort of busy. Uh, yeah. So we said like he had he had seventy players here Saturday morning, and we had uh, sixty under under twenty players. And then obviously we have the club squad guys also who were also there. So there were about 15, 18 club guys there. So what we had about 80 players at City Park and they had about 70 players here in Belleville. And I said, I don't think anywhere in South Africa last Saturday there were so many yeah. rugby players yeah. involved doing stuff. So yeah, and, and, and I think the club coaches and the school coaches, they're fortunate because we can give them the stats and we can give them something to build on for next year. So, Jerome, it, um, I think we'll leave it at that, but it certainly does seem like you can't judge a book by its cover. You never know what you're looking at from a player perspective until you've actually done the testing and looked at the data. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and sometimes we also... It's not the date. The data is, yeah, we say 90%, we look at that. Yeah. But we also know know our customers. You can see uh, uh, if this guy's maybe his uh, data and his stats is not as good as the other guy, but you can see this guy, he has something. So sometimes you have to follow that also. You don't chuck a guy yeah. away because you can see, look, this guy looks like a rugby player. Maybe 
He didn't work hard enough in the lockdown. So we always, uh, obviously we told the guys, we'll give you another opportunity. Yeah. Because yeah. you can see you have something. So it's always also more than just what you see on paper. Jerome, yeah. we'll leave it at that and we'll say thanks to you. We know that you've got your hands full there and very busy. And uh, we'll hopefully we'll catch up again soon. And uh, we're looking forward to see who all these champions are that are coming through the ranks. Yeah, JP. Yeah, thanks. And I, and I also must say, uh, um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the, 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 the club guys came in last night. Um, and they were really looking, really looking good. Um, I can see, because remember early on when the lockdown started, like we had guys sending in what they were doing at home. Some guys improvise sort of gym stuff at home in the garage or in the backyard. So I can really see that the guys really did a lot of work and, 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 and so were the other clubs also because the guys are really looking in, in good shape. So. Um, they gave us a good base to work off, um, so we know where to go to now with them. Will you will you be doing some more testing uh, uh, before the before the holidays with the club rugby guys? Um, yeah, we're busy. They, I mean, they obviously coming in tomorrow again, right. and we're gonna be busy till the fifteenth with them. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to to uh, uh, seeing the progress of the players and and profiling some of the players. Thanks, yep. Jerome. Thank you. There we go, folks. Jerome Parvata, Western Province Rugby Under 20 coach, of course, uh, head of talent identification as well. And great news there. Great to hear that the club rugby guys are coming through the ranks. And, of course, that they, um, in fact, have been working so hard behind the scenes. And, uh, well, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. And uh, working behind the scenes and then, of course, coming to Western Province, doing the testing. And there you see, uh, see the results now. Of course, the holidays are coming up and we hope that the guys are going to keep maintaining this sort of record that Jerome is talking about. Folks, we'll take an ad break. When we come back from the break, we'll uh, carry on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. Back in a sec. Welcome back, folks. We, of course, carry on talking about what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. Uh, a lot of clubs been very busy um, at their uh, structures over the last few months. Not so much with games, as we know, but with a lot of components around planning the clubs, about media, marketing, but also building the various structures. As you know, a few weeks ago, we had Zoe Nodia from False Bay Rugby Club on the, on the show with us. And she was talking about women's rugby at False Bay. Um, but of course, as we know, the clubs have got a lot of different structures from youth structures to women's structures. And of course, a lot of the clubs have been working on their past player structure or as they still refer to maybe as the old boy structure. And of course, in that space, there are also multiple different competitions that the players and teams have been taking part in. But to tell us a little bit more about Falls Bay and all of the different structures at Falls Bay, we managed to get Jono van der Valt back on the line and we haven't spoken to Jono for a long time. Jono, welcome back. How's it, JP? How's it going? Yep, not too bad. Uh, we haven't seen you for a while there, Jono. Um, uh, you've taken a break now a little bit from the uh, under-21s. Uh, yes, the, the uh, Western Province commitment is, is finished for 2020. And now it's time to get uh, stuck into uh, normal work as well as uh, False Bay. Because, you know, False Bay and Club Rugby never sleep. So we're always uh, very, very, very busy on, from, from, from a club point of view. Uh, well, talking about busy, from you probably heard me summarize there all the the activities. Uh, I mean, you guys have been very busy, not not only in the last few weeks, but over the last seven, eight months. You've been making sure that the admin is right and you've been having regular management meetings and thinking about the field and the facilities. There's a lot of work behind the scenes. Yes, JP, one of the things, and our chairman actually alluded to it as well, is that is that we're a rugby club. So even though there's no rugby, uh, we, we, we still have a club, we still have a, a, a general community of, of uh, like-minded individuals and we've just really tried to, to stay fresh, to, to kind of be current, to make sure that if there's any coaching course, if there's anything that's online that, 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 that guys are getting stuck into it and, yeah. uh, and again, just always prepping and preparing for, for uh, 2021. So we've spoken to a couple of clubs and a lot of the clubs have been talking about their structures in the, in the clubs and that um, it's not just a question, like you say, it's not just a question of coaching rugby. There are, are multiple components. And so 
what, we, what we've seen now, some of the clubs doing is, is, is literally creating structures to look after the different departments in the club. Is, are you guys doing something similar to that? Yeah, JP, we've, we've, been, we've been very fortunate over the last decade that, that our, our numbers and our depth is very strong at Pulse Bay. Um, but, you know, a lot of people also, uh, it's very easy to kind of criticize other clubs, but, but having a lot of numbers and a lot of depth almost comes with its own problems as well. Um, and, and, and just to give you a little kind of indication of that, we have a first team, second team, third team, fourth team, fifth team, sixth team. We have a ladies team. We have an under-20 A's and B's. And we have a Jocks and Cox team. We only have two rugby fields. Uh, and, you know, we have to accommodate all of these players, coaches, and everyone that, that just wants to kind of play rugby and want to get going. So, so yes, it comes with its own challenges. And that's why we have to plan and prep accordingly. Yeah, yeah. And then um, the uh, other part that I mentioned was the, um, uh, you, you call it the jocks and crocs. Uh, just, <laughs> you got to explain to us, what are jocks and crocs? Yeah, so, so it's almost historically the jocks were kind of, you know, if you just like, like almost finished playing rugby and you were maybe between the ages of about 33 or 35, you would you'd maybe be called a jock. And then those guys that are 35 plus, those are going to be the crocs because, as you know, if you want to play play for the crocs, you have to be 35 and older. And how many guys you got? Uh, we've probably got about 35 to 40 strong. Um, and then generally, home games there seems to be 60 or 70. Uh, and then away games, obviously, the, the the numbers tend to dwindle a little bit. Are the guys all for, all former false player players? Is is that how it works? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I'd say 95% of guys are all X X X. Exposed to guys, maybe you'd find one or two have played their, their rugby, maybe in Johannesburg, uh, Durban, PE, East London, wherever around the country. We have a few guys which, which are maybe coming from the UK and the States, and they're of age and they just come down, put on a jersey, and play some rugby. Yeah. And uh, I mean, your advice as, a, as the head coach for the first team, do you, do you guys have a, a coach as well for the, for the, for the old boys? Yeah, so the, so the Crocs will have player coach because nobody just wants to just kind of coach and never get stuck into playing. So they will pretty much do do player coach type thing. There'll there'll be a small committee uh, sometimes comprising of between one and five guys, and they will kind of plan the year out. Uh, and I, I know in the past there used to be a a, a old Crocs teams tournament, and then uh, kind of once a month the guys get together. So so they will play some touch when they can, and then they look forward to to the rugby days once a month. Uh, John, just how important is it to have these type of structures at a club? Uh, JP is massively important. One, uh, from 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 a net uh, from from a networking point of view, but two, from a support point of view, because we have Friday night lights with some of the reserve league where, where some of the reserve league teams play in, and and all of those older guys, you know, everybody works. Maybe there's a few business owners in there, and everyone will either support. Um, whether, whether it be a brewery role, whether it be a cool drink or a beer, whether it be a sponsorship come game day, whether it be a signboard, whether it be anything that needs to be done in and around the club, we need all of these kind of club rugby structures to pull through and help and assist the club where possible. Any idea um, uh, for tournaments or competitions? And obviously now this year we know is, a, is pretty much a write-off, um, but are there, are there structures around the province or even around the country that are busy planning for next year where there are maybe tours happening for, for the past players? Yes. Look, um, normally there's a rugby day kind of every year and it, and it tends to rotate between the provinces. Uh, it is a little bit difficult this past year that's just happened now. And unfortunately next year, you know, even though there will be some planning, uh, the, the guys are going to have to wait a bit on 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 like protocols, COVID protocols, return to play, etc. And then especially with tours, you know, to yeah, kind of get yeah. around the country or, or maybe even within the province, they're going to have to see if, if, if those type of tours are going to go ahead next year. And uh, what about from a Bay perspective in terms of the players uh, from now, from a, from a, call it uh, your first team squad, your second team squad, uh, are, are you guys now, um, uh, is, it, is it currently more about still about preparing for 2021? Yes, JP, we, we don't, uh, again, you know, rugby, we always use uh, the old cliches of you, you can only control the controllables. And, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next year in terms of maybe what our government and SORU and, and maybe what Western province will, will, will uh, give to us. But one thing we have to do is we have to plan and prep accordingly. Rugby, uh, 
like rugby takes some time to get your body to adapt. So we've given the guys five weeks off now. They can hit the gym, they can hit the road, they can do what they want. And come next year in January, we've, we've already gotten our basic um, kind of certificate to from 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 the union. So I know Falls Play will basically be able to kind of do like a ready to return to play a rugby come January. So our guys are looking forward to it. Uh, we'll, we'll be hitting uh, CrossFit and we'll be hitting the field. And hopefully once we get a green light in terms of friendlies and games and a leaf, well, then we'll kind of hit the, the, the uh, ground running. Right? So no, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, great chatting with you as always. Um, of course, we're, we can't wait to see everybody back on the park, uh, back at training. And, and uh, yeah, it's great to know that you've already ticked that first box, which is, of course, uh, that... Um, COVID compliance return to training component. Yes, correct. It's, it was, it's, uh, it's quite admin intensive. So if a club hasn't started, uh, best you guys start already. And um, there's, there's, a, there's a mountain out of paperwork. Uh, it's about registering players, making sure that you have protocols in place on the field, make sure you can screen your players, make sure that, that, that everything is still safe for, for everyone to play this game on the field. Yeah. Um, so. So, so we're super keen to just get on the field, even if it's just touch and handling and doing whatever we're allowed to do. Um, at least, at least you're on the grass with with boots. Of course, health and safety is uh, absolute priority. Still uh, remains a priority. Have you got any any um, messages of advice around COVID for anybody that is watching right now? Yeah, look, I would I would just say always always just maintain your distance, wear a mask, clean your hands as often as you can. Um, and then I would just say, just kind of be, be smart about everything. Uh, be make 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 good decisions. You know, the youngsters like to go out and they obviously like to enjoy their weekends. Um, but just make good decisions. Um, and that's maybe the only advice that I would give. Look, you must you must still live your life and you must still spend time with friends and family. Um, but but there are better ways to go about it. Follow the health and safety protocols. Yeah. Well, we've heard it before, and we obviously need to stick to that to make sure that. People stay safe. John, we leave it at that. We say thanks to you, and uh, hopefully, we'll uh, catch up with you again soon. Nick and JC, thanks for having me, man. There we go, folks. Jonathan Avalt, director of rugby at Falls Bay Rugby Football Club. And of course, they are busy at the moment, or have been for a while now, building their youth structures, the women's structures, as well as the past players' structures. And uh, well, hopefully, hopefully, uh, well, next year, I suppose. We'll see some of those uh, competitions rolling out, the um, old boys competitions. And we look forward to, to sharing that with you here on Cape Rugby TV. Um, right, folks, as you know, Score Energy Drinks is on board with uh, Western Province Rugby and the Western Province Club Rugby Sevens. Um, and now, if you want to win yourself a case of Score Energy Drinks, now this is a double up competition. You can win yourself a case of Score Energy Drinks as well as 24 Cape Rugby TV masks. So we're doubling up for you. All you need to do is SMS the word SCORE to 33090. Just SMS the word SCORE to 33090. There you see the name of the can, SCORE. And you see the name of the what you need to send. You can see it see it behind me there. But SMS the word SCORE uh, to 33090. And you can put yourself in the mix to win a case of 24 SCORE energy drinks as well as 24 masks. So that's our double up competition uh, that you could put yourself in the mix for. Congratulations then to last week's winner, Sakum Zivati. Sakum, you walk away with a set of uh, 24 masks, courtesy of CTC Sports, and a case of Score Energy Drinks. Someone from Cape Rugby Team is going to get in touch with you, and uh, um, you can uh, uh, collect your prize. Folks, when we come back from the break, we're going to find out what's happening at Western Province Rugby with the African Bank Esports Challenge. And of course, uh, this is where the clubs will be, be uh, participating, competing against each other in the uh, PlayStation competition, the online competition, where they are participating in the African Bank Esports Challenge. And we're really looking forward to find out how that competition is going to go because we'll end up with teams on logs with results and fixtures. So that's going to be very exciting. Stick around. We'll come back on the break. Welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV. We carry on talking about what's happening in the world in Western Province Club Rugby. Well, as you know, <clears throat> over the last few uh, weeks, we've been focusing a lot on women's rugby. And in fact, Western Province Rugby this week is starting their very uh, first um, high-performance coaching course, which is, of course, exclusively for women. 
And we've got a lot of women coming through the ranks in terms of coaching. They've been playing for Western Province and joining me on the line. One of our champions, stars, coaching and playing is, of course, uh, Charmaine Kayser. And Charmaine is a player coach at the Tire at Tigerberg. Charmaine, uh, nice to have you on the show. How are things there with you? Thank you, JP. I'm fine as well. No, I'm pretty good. Um, over over the, the, the last few months, we keep telling everybody we just put one foot in front of the other every time. Um, Charmaine, but let's start with you. Um, uh, you play a coach at Tigerberg or Ditira Women's Rugby. You've been involved there for a, for a while now. But where did you start off with club rugby? I started club rugby in Eastern Cape, Ghana's rugby club. And I moved 2011 to Western Cape. I started playing for UWC from 2011 to 2017. And I started playing for the theater. How did you, what, what made you decide to start with rugby? Why was that, uh, was that something in your blood? Yes, it's a family thing. Uh, my father was playing rugby and my cousin, John Kaiser. So the rugby is, is in the family. Are you talking about the De Dion Kayser who played centre? Yes, he's my cousin. Wow, okay. So you've, you've definitely got some skills connections there. Um, uh, what position were you playing, Charmaine? I was playing wing centre before, but now I'm playing eight men. And did, did Dion manage to give you some skills or uh, <laughs> to pass on some skills? <laughs> Not exactly. He's my father and his father. Fantastic. Yeah. And then you came down to Cape Town and you started at U-Dubs and now you're at, uh, at Tigerberg. Tell us a little bit about your, your playing career at Tigerberg so far. I played it. I started playing in 2007 at Tigerberg. It was, it was a great team when I started. It was a lot of experienced players. So the experienced players left. So the youngsters come through. So it's more... A nice vibe of youngsters. They give you a nice vibe and they, they, they're quick to learn about the rugby. And uh, this is something, of course, that uh, we know that you're busy building at the moment. You're, we had Frances Engelbrecht, the chair lady of the Tigerberg Women's Rugby Structure on the show a few weeks ago. And she said that you guys have got a lot of building at the moment. And in fact, uh, there was a big uh, uh, a sponsorship also for, for Women's Rugby at Tigerberg. Yes, the sport will come through, yeah, but uh, there's a lot of young ladies coming through from around the 60s and the 80s from Western Province, and there's still new players who don't even play rugby. So for them, it's still new in the game, but we must build it to give them experience. And Charmaine, you're also going to be doing um, the uh, women's uh, high performance coaching course at Western Province. Yes, on Saturday, JP. And um, where do you, where do you, are you hoping to take that? Are you hoping to, to take your coaching career a little bit further? Yes, JP. I, in my mindset now, I'm looking forward to start coaching now at the theater. And then I will look forward for Western Province girls. Uh, but I will start looking from under 16 and up. Now, Charmaine, we've, of course, got to ask you a little bit about the league itself because we know the Tira have been playing um, against other women's rugby sides in Western Province. Um, would, do you have any big memories there? Who are the tough teams to play against? The, tough, the toughest team is Buzzy Bees. Busy it, it is very tough. Every time we play them, they beat us with one point or five points. So it's a very close game every time we play against them. Now, from a, from a fan's point of view, um, of course, we know the Tira have got so many fans. And we, I know we, we, we spoke to Francis about this as well. Um, um, you guys must be missing the fans. You must be missing getting back on the park. Yeah, JP, a lot. Every time we play it. At Florida Park, Tiger Park Field, there's a lot of fans. Not only if the boys playing, the girls is playing, they're cheering the girls up. So the cheers is is very nice there. And if, if you give me a memory, one memory that stands out for you, um, you of course played provincial rugby, and you've been and you've played national rugby. Um, if there's a, a a big memory that jumps out for you, what would it be? 
the World Cup 2010, playing against New Zealand in the first game. It was, was very great for me to, to be part of South Africa, playing against New Zealand, the best team. That's incredible. And Charmaine, now you're, you're, you're on, your, on your side, just from a playing point of view, um, and we know that you've got the coaching course coming up now. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, you're, you're still active and you're going to be playing um, um, in 2021. Yes, JP. I'm still going to play in 2021, but I will still be part of the coaching team. For me, it's like to put all my experience, I have to put it into the youngsters. So when I retired, I know I did my best. So I'm 33 now. I'm the oldest in the team. So for me, it's like I must put back what way I left. Have you got any words of advice for the for the um, women and girls that are watching um, the show right now that are looking at you and saying, well, they want to be like you? Just be yourself and practice and everything will go your way if you do your part in, in women's rugby. But women's rugby is, gonna, is big now. It's very big now. Everything is there now. Yeah, we certainly from our side are looking forward to to talking a lot more to you and uh, to the coaches that are on the course. And, and we're looking forward to, to seeing your games next year. Yes, JP. Thank you. <laughs> there we go, folks. Uh, Charmaine Kayser. We just lost her at, at, at the end there. Player coach at uh, Tigerberg, uh, Dictira. And, of course, well, we're looking forward to, to seeing uh, women's rugby on the park as with all rugby on the park um and next year and as you know then of course uh, western Rams rugby starting this high performance uh, coaches course for exclusively for women um i think this coming weekend so uh, we'll be looking forward to lots of feedback and sharing that information folks uh, that's a wrap from us then this evening we trust that you will have a uh, a safe weekend and we will remind you please observe all of those regulations please always wear a mask practice the social distancing and always wash your hands. Please stay on top of this, of this thing. We have to all be as responsible as possible. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye.